Welcome back friends, this is Solomon Jagwe, I'm back with another quick insight <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about iClone and the Omniverse and how you can animate uh, a character who's rapping and I'm going to be using this as a case study. This is a, a rap video that I created uh, using a CC3 character animated inside of iClone and using audio to face to create the lip sync and then rendered inside of the Omniverse environment and uh, then making some really cool magic. So today we're going to be taking a, a, just a path through, like a real uh, walkthrough how to get this done. And I'm going to play this clip just a little bit. You can always go back, go to my YouTube channel and check it out if you haven't already seen it. And uh, if you're new to my channel, guys, I kindly ask that you spare a minute to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're alerted when I post a new video. And also, I just wanted to say a thank you to the religion team that made this video possible, as well as a big thank you to the NVIDIA team and the, Om the team behind the Omniverse. All right. So status, again, the animation is going to be done inside of iClone and uh, we're going to use Character Creator 3 to bring the model to life. So this is the video that I'm talking about right here. Let me play a little bit of it so you can hear. Let him hate, let him get afraid. When you walk straight, all they do is get away. Fork in the road now, what you gonna do? Take it straight for the chase, 100 proof. In the pursuit of happiness, you can lose it all, still come back and get it. No pacifism, it's uphill battles. Can't see the other side like battleship. So that isn't that cool. <laughs> so that was my challenge. Is that how was I able was I going to be able to make this character rap? and also be able to dance and so I'll also show you behind the scenes of how I was able to create the, the mock-up for the full body but the main focus today is going to be audio to face and uh, how to get that done because a number of you have been asking how to do this inside of uh, Omniverse and audio to face and I'm going to walk you through that re real quick so first step was to create the character itself so here's my character in character creator 3 and you can see the model looking really really nice right so the assets that I was able to use one for the the character I wanted like an afrocentric model like a middle-aged character so I used uh, Alicia from the uh, real illusion over here and I definitely used the export uh, version of it because I want to be able to send it to the Omniverse. So if you just buy the standard one, then you're going to just be stuck inside of <laughs> Character Creator 3. So please make sure you get you get an export version of it, right? And then for the leather, the outfit, I was able to use uh, this leather out combo outfit from Polygonal Miniatures. It's really, really nice. And it just gave me the vibe that I was looking for. The leather jacket looks really cool. Okay, again, that is also available inside uh, from the content store and you can see the difference this i content and export and again you need the export version of it and then for the glasses i used uh, this uh adolf anterius this is the artist i use modern glasses again i used the export version of this because i wanted to be able to send it to omniverse right that's really 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 cool and then for the hat again i used the export version of polygonal miniatures in the hat that i picked was uh, down here so this hat right here and mine is uh, black so those are the assets that I was able to use and then put together this character over here to make my uh, rap artist so my story again I al I'm always thinking about story but I gave her a name called Maze Beats amazing like beats you get it <laughs> so again I was just trying to think of a story of how I could bring this to life or that. So this is a character who's gonna be auditioning at a, you know, an event somewhere. The song that I wanted her to do is actually built into Omniverse. And this is what it sounds like. So this is the, the song. So this is the song that's inside of Omniverse. And it's a male voice actually, the one that I started with. Track that's a renegade, go against the grain, gotta do that every day. Hard to meditate when everything is MMA. Kick down so many times for better days. All right, so I want that's the song that the rap 
track that is inside of Omniverse, but I wanted it to be more of a female character. So I took it inside of uh, uh, Adobe Audition and then did like a, a pitch shift on it. And this is what it sounds like. Walking on a track, that's a renegade. Go against the grain, gotta do that every day. Hard to meditate when everything is MMA. Kick down so many times for better days. Okay, and so once I had the track and that was gonna be my story, that's the song that she was gonna rap to, I also put together, I, I worked with a, a young Ugandan artist called Andrea Baguma, he's from Uganda. He's also, we've worked together on another video, like the Meta Human, <laughs> no Meta Human, no cry, right? So this is the full song that we're able to put together. Jay walking on a track, that's a renegade. Go against the grain, gotta do that every day. Hard to meditate when everything is MMA. Kick down so many times for better days. Let him hate, let him get afraid. When you walk straight, all they do is get away. So that is uh, the combination of all these different, the kicks and the grand keys and electric. But when you're taking it to audio to face, you just really want the pure track. So you, the AI has a chance to just analyze that one vocal, not everything else. So that's what. Uh, so that, that's why I have different uh, versions of this song. I mean, the track, so that I can just isolate it to that. And that's what again was the focus. Is that I'm gonna take this track and then use it, this character to rap to that. Okay. Now, of course, I was gonna have to act out the different parts of it, but I decided to ask my daughter to give me a hand. So she was able to wear the Perception Neuron Studio suit. The reason I love the Perception Neuron Studio is because you it's a strap-based system and I can put it on any character. And my daughter was able to wear it and not have a, an issue with having to use like a, a, a suit <laughs> that was only made for just one body size. So. That is the flexibility of the perception neuron suit. So once I had the character created and I had the song ready that I needed to work with, now I needed to then send this model to iClone. So there are two ways you can do this. You can either send the model straight from here and send it to, um, to export it as a USD file to Omniverse uh, so that you can then use it in uh, audio to face as well. But I was, one thing that I wanted to do was first send this model to iClone so I could do test it, you know, test to see some of uh, the, if the animation was going to look great and test my mockup as well because I wanted to record the mockup using Access Studio right here. So you can actually see the animation of uh, the mockup that I cap captured using my daughter. And that's the dance that you actually eventually get to see in the music video. And so that, that is the step that was very important to me that uh, I, the reason why I just didn't send this to Omniverse is because I wanted to first take it to iClone. So, and the way they did it, I did it was select the character over here and then uh, click on this icon which export iAvatar to iClone and send it, uh, click on that. And then I selected the best and you know, the highest texture size. And so I was able to send the character over to iClone once you send it to iClone, it's going to show up under the actor tab and a custom over here character. At least that's where I mapped this to go to. So under here, Omniverse, Singer. And then I have several versions of this character because inside of uh, Character Creator 3, when I was putting the character together, the hand over here was protruding through uh, the gloves and some of these clothing. So I was able to actually select this uh, model over here, maze bits, and I go to the leather coat outfit. I go to edit mesh over here, uh, select sculpt, and I was able to do some fixes, you know, like just uh, fix some of these protrusions and you can see how it's moving. So that's how you're able to fix it. And then when I was done, just ed kick out of edit mode. And then went to export iAvatar and click export. I made sure to put it in this folder, you know, so that I could actually find it inside of uh, iClone. So it's in my public documents, Reillusion, custom iClone 7, character 20. So if in the future you're using iClone 8, it will be the iClone 8 custom. But then I've, I know that some things are gonna change as well. But for this program, I was using this path and I named it as uh, maze bits. Okay, and once you save that, then if in iClone, 
you will be able to see it over here. So actually if you right click on this and click on find file, it's going to take you to that exact folder where I saved it. So that's how I stay organized. And the reason I have multiple versions of this is because there are some, this is the first one I worked with, then as I procedurally go through and fix the character, I always want to always have a backup so I can go back and fix it. So as you can see here, this is just a, a, the example of the full model, right? With the animation applied to it. And I'm gonna fast forward to this part right here. So you can see the character, that is the final animation right but let me go to the scene over here avatar before i bring in the other character i'm gonna zoom out a little bit turn her off make sure the character is deselected go to content then load the one that has no animation that i was able to save from character creator 3 over here and then bring into iClone for animation because I want to walk you through the part where I do the animation part of it. The character is loaded so in that scene now we have the one that has the animation and the one that doesn't have any animation. So this one that has no animation is the one that then I use to send to uh, the Omniverse and then one that I'm going to be using for audio to face. So for me to be able to use this in audio to face to animate uh, that rap video I have to go to export over here, export USD and give it a name up at the top. So just say for example maze, it's for example like that. And for this one because there are other characters in the scene, I want to isolate to just the selected one. But if you're sending like I did for the environment that I've eventually put together, I had the, the whole environment inside of uh, the omniverse. So if I were to kick out of this and go to the perspective view, you can see that I have a stage with a character inside and she's standing right on the stage right there. Okay, so this environment was put together using assets from DAR Studio. And so I was able to, the reason, I, and I, that's one of the reasons that I send my character from Character Creator 3, uh, instead of sending this directly from USD, and you could actually do this if you just want to animate the character, but because I wanted to animate the character inside of the environment to have a, like the perfect positioning, because I knew I was going to add camera movements and all that, it was important for me to send it to iClone because then from iClone I could send the character and the environment together and that's what you see here, okay? And so in iClone, let's go back to iClone. So make sure it, you set the character to either real time or path traced. So if you're gonna do like animation, it, like in real time, then definitely have to do real time over here. And make sure you select a current frame because you're not sending any animation just yet, right? And then make sure you include the Omnivice audio to face mesh. This is very, very important, right? And when you're done, I also make sure I send this to like 30 frames per second so that it translates properly in Omniverse and then click export, right? So when you export, make sure you know where you are saving this model at because once you save it, it's gonna put it in a folder and include this A2A folder. If you don't have this A2A folder, folder, then you won't be able to use audio to face. So that's why it's very important for you to include this Omniverse audio to face mesh, right? So export, and so when you're done, this model is ready. And if I go to Omniverse right now, sorry, Omniverse, and this is, uh, so there are two characters that I put in here. So for me, what I did is I made sure to export two versions. One, one version was real time, right? For me to preview the animation over in inside of uh, audio to face as well as uh, Omniverse, but also one that is path trace so that when it came to render time, I could render this using path trace because path tracing version, it sends the nice skin shader from iClone to Omniverse and handles the subsurface scattering that we need, including all the outfits. And so once you exported this and you have all the options that you see here, then you go to audio to face, okay? 
you come to audio to face and then browse to that folder where you created, uh, where you exported your character to. So browse to the folder, which is this folder right here, where you have that A2A folder, okay? And then uh, create a new project, right? Make sure you're in real time. And then go to character, transfer tab over here and create a mail template project. Press F to focus on it. And then you can pull this apart to the left and to the right over here. And here's a very important step, right? Because you notice right now there's there's no A2F pipeline in here. So the, this model right here, the Mac model, is what you need to have selected. And then click A2F pipeline over here and click on yes, attach. And so we're gonna then have this populated. It's very important that you do this step or as it's not gonna work very well, okay? So now if I play one of these tracks, you can actually see that. And let me turn it on the audio. Before she heard that symphony again, just as young Arthur wanted. So there you already see that in action. And for me, that was the selling point because like, once I saw that I could take a different audio files, you know, and then play back. Are those shy Eurasian footwear, cowboy chaps, or jolly earth moving headgear? Isn't that amazing? And you can always turn on loop. So you can footwear, hear it. cowboy chaps, or jolly earth moving headgear. So uh, that gave me confidence that whatever audio that I put in here was going to work. And so the next step then is, I mean, you can even, you could do it now or later, but you can go ahead and find the audio file that you're going to work with. So I'm going to stop this and rewind. I'm going to browse to where my audio file is, the one that has the wrap. All right, so I browse to the audio and remember that vocal file that I was telling you about. So this is the one that I want to play with, but once it really is looking for the folder, and once you select the folder and click select, it's just gonna populate this uh, list over here with all these files in here. So let's press select. And so the one that is at the very top is gonna be the one that's selected first, yeah, but the one that we need really is gonna be our vocal over here. So here's the, something interesting though, before we even proceed here, is that when I play back, Crack, that's a renegade. Go against the grain, gotta do that every day. Hard to meditate when everything is MMA. Kick down. So what is interesting is that even with a beat and music in the background, it's still, the AI is still able to do a good job using audio to face. And by the way, I'm using audio to face 2021.3.3. So if you're watching this in the future, maybe you have a newer version, but this is what I'm using right now. But what's amazing is that it's able to even take that and do an awesome job of uh, adding facial animation to the lips and the mouth down below. But what's better? And today I think it's that day. Manifest what I gotta say. In my mind I've been wanting to make it. So the background music is affecting it. So really what you want to do is you need the clean track and there's gonna be a big difference. So here we go, vocal. And isn't that amazing how quick it does that? And I'm gonna go ahead and press play. Walking on a track that's a renegade Go against the grain, gotta do that every day Hard to meditate when everything is MMA Kick down so many times for better days Let him hate, let him Once I saw that, I knew it was time for me to bring in the character Because I knew everything was going to work, right? So let's zoom out a tiny bit And then go to that folder where we exported our character And double click on A2F And the one that you want to use is this version So there are two of them and you could change the listing of this document so you can see, I mean, this uh, panel right here, you can switch from like icon to like a list so that you can see it better. So the, it's this one, you don't, don't use this one first. Use the first one at the, up at the top without the cavity and just drag and drop it inside of your scene over here. Okay, and then rotate it under the rotation overhead, double click and press zero to make sure it's facing you, okay? And we're just gonna move this over a tiny bit. 
Okay. Then the next step is to select the Mac open mouth version. And by the way, I noticed something about uh, <laughs> audio to face interface is that you don't get double arrows, but when you mouse over, it highlights to blue. That's how you're able to scale it like that. Same thing here. It's like it turns blue and then you're able to scale that, you know. So select Mac over here and you're gonna go to character transfer on this part right here. And under the target mesh, select the mesh that we imported of our character of maze bits over there. Okay, and then under the preset over here, we're gonna choose the Re Reallusion CC3 plus and say yes. Okay, and so you can disable correspondency visibility over here if you want to get rid of all these uh, like really multi-card things that you see in the scene right there. So we did the part where we added the target mesh and then we selected the preset and then the next step is to begin the post wrap okay make sure that's selected and start click on begin post wrap all right so to know that this is working first this turn off the correspondence visibility if we go back to audio to face and press play now you can see the transfer that has just happened over here. And so if I turn on the audio. In a pursuit of happiness, you could lose it all, still come back and get it. No pacifism, it's uphill battles. Can't see the other side like battleship. That's a beautiful moment to finally be at the So that is awesome that we are able to do that. It's able to take that animation, the data from that using artificial intelligence and then apply it to the character over there, okay? So once that part is done, then the next step is to, so you've done this part, you've fitted everything and it has wrapped it. So the next stage then is to work with this character over here. For this next step, we're gonna be working with transferring the blend shapes on this model right here. So what we need to do then is uh, just disable or uh, turn off the visibility of the character transfer so we can focus on this. Uh, the head right here, which is the character that you imported the h wave model. So by default, uh, one of the models that we need, the body one is actually gonna be disabled. So we're gonna enable it right here. And so if you press the W key to move, you're not gonna see the, the transform gizmo in this uh, viewport right now. So what you need to do is actually hold down the Alt key with your left mouse button, just turn it all the way down, rotate, and then you can separate them just a bit like that. And then select this one and just push it over to here a little bit like that. So it's important for you to do that so that you can see uh, both of them, okay? So now it's time to transfer the blend shapes from this character here to the body over here. So we're gonna go to a data conversion over here and we're gonna select the input mesh as the body result because it has the animation on it, uh, the eight wave uh, facial animation. And then the blend shape mesh is gonna be the body. That's the this one on the right hand side, right? And when you're ready, you can click setup blend shape resolve. Click on that. And it's gonna populate this entire field, of, I mean this window over here. So if you scroll all the way down, you see all of them are checked all the way to the very bottom. And so these are the ones that normally when you go to iClone and you're trying to figure out if it's a, a CC3 uh, model can support, these are the blend shapes that you're looking for. And so that's the, we need to load a profile, like a preset that lines up with that. So we have to go to load preset over here. And that preset is gonna be under your local host. So make sure you're logged into your local host on Omniverse. Drop this down, uh, expand Nvidia, expand assets, and then expand characters over here, expand Reallusion, and expand audio to face over here. And then under the Viking one, expand it one more time, and then blend shape preset. And if we change the display type to listing, 
uh, you can see the lower face because we want to be at uh, transferring that facial animation on the bottom part to uh, whatever character we're going to be using with uh, the CC3 character. So select that part right there and load. And once it's loaded, you get an alert that says preset file loaded successfully, which is good. Click OK. And now you can notice that some of them have been disabled and deselected. So, and the ones that have, are going to be transferred are the, the, these are CC3, like X plus blend shapes that we usually work with in iClone, which we need. So now if I play back, if I go back to audio, audio to face and play back. Hate, let him get afraid. Yeah. When you walk straight, all they do is get away. Fork in the road now, what you gonna do? Take it straight for the chase, 100 proof. And Isn't that cool? <laughs> so now the animation is on the blend shape uh, head uh, coming from this side. So this is the part where you then start working on uh, improving the nuance of this uh, animation. Okay. So what we'll do then is over on the right hand side here under emotion, uh, by default it's going to have this uh, profile, the G2B profile. But if you were to test like for example G2A, you can notice the difference, the, the, the lips have changed here. So if you play back, In a pursuit of happiness, you could lose it all, still come back and get it. No pacifism, it's up your battles. Can't see the other side like battleship. That's a beautiful moment to finally be at the top. Looking at and that is really cool. So even with that, it still looks like it's just mumbling up and down, even though I mean you can still get the definition of the lips, but there's something else you can do. So under source frame, so if we play this not the foundation just to look at the plot i wonder what it's like living the life for rock stars and pop stars maybe we should give it a shot and today i think it's that day yeah manifest what i gotta say in my mind so as you, as you can see I and mean, clearly this improves the appearance of the lips moving in and out and that's exactly what you want you don't want it to be just looking like it's muttering like up and down like that that this is where the magic comes in with a uh, audio to face and let's rewind this. You can definitely see the difference. The lips are coming out more naturally, you know, just like you would in a uh, real character, like you're your person. So play with these settings and see which one you, you think works best, best for your character, right? And actually, if you go all this way, you can actually see, like you have to try to rotate around so you can see the different, you know, angles and then adjust this. So there are multiple profiles under here. So the one that I used was a G2C and you can also see the difference. So if I turn on the audio. Hey, put your hand in the sky if you feel the vibe. If you're ready to ride, just know it's vilified. How you supposed to keep trapped with that dream inside? It's not too late to try, what will you decide? All right, and that is the awesome, awesome power of uh, audio to face, guys. <laughs> and I hope this was really uh, this key, this step is really, really important. So please don't miss, don't uh, skip this part because it this is how you'll be able to get the new ones in your animation and making the lips look much better. Okay. So at this point, you really are ready to export this animation from the characters. So make sure bs animation is selected and you go to audio to face over here and export as json so that's that's the step that is really important to be able to send this animation over to iclone so all you gotta do is click on export as json over here give it a, a place where you want to save it and actually if you scroll up to the top over here you can select the path where the, this animation is going to end up and give it a name so for example, if you wanted it to be like maze, let's call it maze and then find uh, the path where you want to save it. And uh, when you're so done, just click export and click export over here. And then it will start to process the animation. Now, depending on the speed of your machine, this might go real quick or it might take a long time. So again this is really really important this part is really important because this json is the one that you're going to then bring into 
iClone using the the uh, the plugins for Omniverse and be able to apply it to your character. So go on, let's, let's move on to the next step then. All right. So once it's uh, the ATF file is exported, we can then go to iClone, select our character, uh, the one that uh, doesn't have any animation yet. And at this point, it's probably preferable to do quick mod. Is that because we're going to be animating? I was just uh, set it to high so I could see how pretty the character <laughs> was going to look. But it's preferable to switch that to high. And also when you're doing the actual playback, uh, it's also recommended that you just uh, lo turn off the timeline as well. Okay, so we have the character here. And so go to plugins up at the top, make sure the character is selected, and then go to Omniverse Audio to Face. Click on Import Animation Omniverse Audio to Face. And then go and load. So go ahead and load this file. Open. And also load the audio that corresponds. Okay, so load it. And at this point, I mean, you could smooth out some of this feature, but uh, the defaults will also work. So after you've loaded, loaded the JSON file and the vocal, go ahead and click Apply. And give it a few seconds. So now you can see the animation has been applied to the character. So if I were to play back, So it's now safe to close this because now you have the animation on your character, right? And you can see the animation moving forward. And I mean, you can, depending on where what you want to do, but I, I, if you click back to high mode. So if your machine can handle it, you can switch back to the high mode and then you can be able to see the animation. So. The one thing that uh, Atwave doesn't do is that it does not do the tongue, right? So you can see the animation going in on the lips, but the tongue is not moving. And that's because it's only animating the, the blend shapes of the, the lower part of the mouth, right? So that's the part where iClone comes in, is that you can now go ahead and select our character over here. And we can go to the animation tab and go to create script and use Aculips, right? And you can go ahead and load the audio. Okay. So if I were to play the, back this audio, Jay walking on a track that's a renegade. Go against the grain, gotta do that every day. Hard to meditate when everything is MMA. Right. So at this point, you can even generate the text. It can go through and generate the text. All right. So you just let it go through and generate the text. And you can see, I mean, it, it, does, it tries to do a good job <laughs> of assigning all of this, but it is still. Uh, struggles because again this is a rap video so a to a audio to face gives you a really really awesome foundation and now you're trying to layer this on top so that you can refine some of the animation and these are visims that it's actually creating that you would be able to use those to like adjust the nuances of the, how the lips are formed as they're saying these characters that's why it really works well with a uh, iClone and uh, using iClone to animate a portion of it. You start off with audio to face to generate the audio track. So what I also did was I already typed this out. So I went through to make sure the words are correct. And I'll go ahead and paste. And then I'll click uh, align. And that's amazing because uh, Aculips does such a good job of this. Like even after you fix the words, it can still go back and align so that the program can then, like if I play back now, you can actually see. Go against the grain, gotta do that every day. Hard to meditate when everything is MMA. Kick down so many times for better days. Let him hate, let him get afraid. Yeah. 
<laughs> so there's a part that I think I missed. Let, let him hate uh, that. So let, let him hate, let him get afraid. So it's things like that that you can go through and uh, fix. So now let's just go ahead and stop this and apply to our character. Make sure you're on the first keyframe. Click apply. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna layer the animation of the visim on top of the character animation that is on the face of the from. So if you go to expression over here, uh, you can actually see that there is, now there's more nuance. So this expression part of it is the one from it audio to face. And the visim is from the Aculeps. It's from Aculeps. So let me play this back. Let's see how it did. And you notice that uh, now the, the tongue is moving, right? So that's how you're able to go in and add some nuance into the animation. In the lips and so up and over here and under the animation tab watch this if i were to reduce the strength of the visim now you can see it's, this is just back to the animation that is created by audio to face and if i decrease the expression of then you can see that the animation is kind of completely off so you can the beauty of icon is and now you can balance between these two right to give it more nuance right so that is the part so even like when i get to this part like if there's a part in in here for the visims that needs a little bit more like strength even right i can still go uh, click on one of them and adjust it, adjust this. So if it is like, if it's, if they're saying K, then I know for sure that I, I probably this K right here, and you can adjust the strength of that, and then adjust different parts of it as well. So that's the beauty of all these animation tools in iClone, is that you can go back and and refine the animation and make it work even better. So that's how I was able to bring this animation to together. So if we go back to the scene, let me turn this off and then bring back the one that has the character. So this is after I've put in a lot of effort <laughs> into the animation. And now you can see And so that, that nuance right there, I was able to add it using, so we're gonna turn that off. As first I put the body mockup so that because I wanted to be able to know when to do the facial expression. So inside of Axis Studio over here, the animation is running. So I'll go ahead and rewind to the beginning, which is that, right? And then select our character over here for the this for the body animation. I use the Perception Runs Studio Suit, and I'll go to Plugins, go to Motion Live over here, and I'll make sure that uh, I select uh, the Perception Run is using the correct IP address over here. And if it's working correct, then if you click on it, it will work. Okay. So I'll make sure that uh, the port number is correct. And then inside of Access Studio, I can go back over here, go to settings, go to broadcast, and then use TCP IP, use the correct IP address and the correct uh, port. So make sure you, you switch to TCP and put in the correct IP address and the port number. Make sure those match and make sure that it's in edit mode and we'll click OK. And so we go back to iClone over here and we turn this on. So it's, it's going to turn green as long as the IP address and port number are correct. Then for the character that we need, I just go to perception rune and enable that. 
and I even can press preview. Let's zoom out a tiny bit so we can see our character and then press a space bar to preview. And now if I go back to axis over here and press play, I don't make sure uh, the character is selected. It's first. So make sure the character is selected over here. So under the export settings under broadcasting, make sure that uh, displacement <laughs> is enabled. Uh, I forgot about that. So make sure a displacement is enabled over here so that when you go back to icon and press preview and press spacebar, then the character is going to be moving. So when you're ready, it's because you see how the shoulders are kind of raised up, right? So we can go back, press space button to stop preview, uh, preview, rewind, and then we're going to press record. Make sure that you're in uh, quick mode because you want the data to come in like smooth <laughs> without any jitter. And if it's on, in high mode preview or uh, right, like high mode uh, display in the viewport, then you're using resources that you shouldn't be using really. And also we make sure that uh, we collapse the, make sure you're on the first keyframe Make sure you rewind, uh, collapse. Make sure you also add enough frames over here. So 5,000, depending on how long your mockup file is. So it could be like maybe even uh, 15,000 because you always want to have enough space so you don't run out. All right. And then extend the out point all the way. Uh, get ready to record. Press record over here. Let's minimize the timeline press record, your character is selected, and then inside of Axis, Studio, Rewind, and then press play, come back to Icon, press spacebar. So now it's recording. And so you look at how the timing, so the animation hasn't started. So you have, once it's recorded, make sure that you slide the mockup data over ever so slightly. Let's press space bar when you're done recording and you can close that window. All right, so if we bring back the timeline, we're gonna see that our character has mockup and make sure that you have the correct character selected. So now we have motion the motion file over here. And so because I know the file, like the audio begins at a certain point. So if I go and fit to window, I know my audio is gonna start like right here. And so I need to adjust this mockup file to match the animation. So the animation, so this is where the, she starts wrapping like around here. So then I can trim this and delete that part and we can just slide this over here. All right, so now we have enough just to do a test. So now I notice also the shoulders are kind of up. So what I need to do then is use the cool <laughs> iClone animation tool. So edit motion layer over here and I'm gonna just uh, lower this. Just uh, click on this, get rid of that notification. And let's take that away, right? So now I can just uh, fix this and lower the shoulder. And this one also lower the shoulder and then also rotate it if you want, depending on where the mic is. And also a tiny bit this way, Get the arm, just a tiny bit like that. And if you need to fix the fingers, this is the point where you fix it as well. So you can either do something like this and then do like a full fist and then grab, and then you can rotate the individual fingers as well. And the thumb, you can also rotate it as well. And exactly. So again, and also the 
hand over here needs to be fixed a tiny bit like that all right so again put in as much effort as you need to to fix this and if i go back and play now so the shoulder is down however a little bit of the arm is is protruding or rather cutting into the body so we just bring up the timeline again go back to our starting point over here always fix that at that keyframe right there go back to edit motion layer and just rotate this ever so slightly and make sure you're in the local translation over here and this one maybe we just need to tiny bit of out and move this over like so all right and that's the cool thing about icon it's very easy to modify the animation so now it's a much better animation okay now there's a part where like if i needed to the character to raise their arm up in the air you have to be able to animate those are like simple animation principles but that's how i was able to add the body mock-up to the full to the facial animation and the last part of course will be to be to add facial animation to the eyes and all that and that's when the I, the iPhone comes in so if you go to plugins over here go to motion light and then uh, live face make sure you put the correct IP address over here and uh, that's gonna be the IP address on your phone so go ahead and put in the correct IP address from your iPhone into the live face part over here and if you have it correct it's going to turn green then go back to our character over here and then select live face and if i do a quick preview and press spacebar so what you want to do is you don't want to overwrite the lips right so i want to be able to isolate uh, the lips now so i press spacebar to get out of preview mode so turn off the chin turn off the lips and all i want is this part right here and then when i'm ready to record i can go ahead and uh, start recording but you don't want to blend you want to blend right because you don't want to replace all right and let's preview again just for so she's talking i'm blinking like that so when you're ready now you can record and press spacebar and so that's how i was able to add the facial animation to the character and be able to add the nuance of the full uh, be able to add a full body animation facial animation the lip sync and i can put back the glasses so if we go back to the scene over here and turn that off and bring back the one that has a full animation that's how i was able to bring this character to life right and when this animation is ready right then i can select uh, the model that has the animation uh, go to x uh, usd export over here and make sure I, I select it to just the selected one and put my range depending on how far you want the animation to be like even if it's 6000 right and include uh, right at this point you really don't need this anymore because now you're sending animation to uh, for using omniverse right export that include uh, make sure you give it a name and then for at this point is where i did two versions and because there's no environment it's just the character i make sure i select i choose selected over here right and make sure you put the range as well and uh export so once you export the usd file if you go to omniverse you'll be able to then load that character so if i go to maze beats so there's maze beats uh path tracing and maze beats uh real time 
I can then let's go over here. I can take her like the one for real time. Let's actually do the path traced one so you can see the difference. And you can bring her and put her on the stage right here and give it a chance to go through and do the textures. Okay. So if I were to zoom in, you notice that there's a difference between these two characters. So one is uh, prepared for path tracing, one is for real time. So if I were to switch to path tracing over here, you can see now that this character has a really, really nice skin shader applied to her, whereas this is real time. So you can still render the real time character inside of Omniverse, but the path tracing is looking much better. And so another really important thing when you import this animation is you have to make sure to go to edit over here, go to preferences, and that preferences tab, depending on which Omniverse that you're using, if you're using 2022.1, 20, 20, uh, then go to the preferences tab here because the animation has also, the timeline has been added in a different way, it's no longer the same. And then go to USD skeleton, make sure that this is enabled because if it's not enabled, the character facial animation and the blend shapes are not going to work, okay? All right, so if I were to go to window and switch to animation, right, over the timeline. Now, if I play back, you can see the animation playing back the full body animation from the perception neuron. And you can see the animation right there. So make sure this part is selected so that the character can show fully animation. But this is really, really cool, is that The facial animation has been broadened and you can see the differences between the, the one that is path traced and the one that is just uh, real time. So that's how I was able to bring all this together. <laughs> and I did some uh, camera animations as well in here, but most of the animation was done in iClone. And so uh, there are some camera animations that I did in iClone. So if I were to switch to uh, watch some of these cameras, for example, this one and if I play back and I'm gonna switch to real time so you can see it better you can see how the camera is moving so that animation was rendered or was created using iClone but because USD exports everything it's able to export the keyframe animation of the camera as well and break it in here so it's very important to choose which model that you're gonna export out of iClone, right? When you're exporting from USD, using USD. And it's important for you to know which, how you plan to render this. Because if you bring in a, a character that is for path tracing, you can see the differences right there. So we switch to path tracing and you see how much better the character looks, okay? And you can even see, so I did some edits in here in terms of uh, like the texture of the character just to darken it up a little bit. And for lighting, actually I should just uh, switch to perspective over here. For lighting, I simply went to create over here, add the light. So there are multiple lights that you can use. I relied a lot on the cylinder lights and also on the rectangular lights. So I do rectangular lighting over here and I move it. So if I were to rotate over here, you can see the different lights that I used. And the cool thing is that uh, it's able to bring in lighting from iClone as well. And so, I mean, it, it, depending on the mode that you want to set, all these lights, once you move them around, you can see them interacting with the environment. And just uh, using like a direction, that's how you're able to then set the look and feel of your character. And the, the, what I love the most is that being able to like, by the way, so when you're moving these characters, <laughs> it's important to get the very, the top level. 
so that you can actually move so you can actually see this character the new one that i brought has lights that uh, are cast uh, i've exported so when you're exporting uh, make sure that you delete the lights that you don't need because she has her own cameras like wherever she goes you can see it over there so guys thank you so much for joining me today i hope this was helpful uh this is how i was able to put this together and then when i was ready to render i went over here and uh, clicked on uh, render so for to render the video in the new version you click on this icon right here to do movie capture uh, this right here let me see if we can maximize it so up over here and brings up the movie capture and i set it to 24 frames per second and i set the range uh, make sure that uh, in this render settings themselves they have to match if you're doing path tracing make sure that uh, the under path tracing that you have denoising enabled over here and make sure you set the total samples 500 over here you can also crank this up a little bit more so that you have more information or more you click more noise out but also when you get to this panel right here what i did was uh, i made sure i didn't use uh, so when you get here make sure you switch to path tracing as well and then the path tracing samples per pixel and here it gives you an idea of how long it's going to take so at 1280 by 720 it was doing like 21 frames per uh, rather yeah 21 seconds for 500 500 samples and so and each shot is going to be different you know like if you go to this camera here like close camera over here that shot is going to take a different time compared to another shot because depending on what is on the screen at the time okay and so when you're ready uh, for me i did uh, enable motion blur i just turned that off for now but you can enable that if you're ready and then create a put the path where you're going to save the an the animation give it a name and then capture the sequence all right and you can also do a queue of it and uh that that's it that's pretty much how i was able to do that and some of the settings that uh, i recommend again is uh make sure that uh you set the this number here to match so this is 500 it's going to be the number that you see here over here so try to adjust go to different frames and see the difference as you're setting up and also if you want to render like a higher frame like something bigger then you can switch it to 1280 so right now this is a preview for 1280 by 720 so thank you so much guys for joining me and i hope this was uh insightful uh, again this this is uh just me showing you how i was able to use omniverse and audio to face uh, to create this uh, rap video and how well it looks <laughs> when rendered in the omniverse uh, thank you so much and as always uh, dare to dream big do not give up on your dream i uh, just pay a minute to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're alerted when you when i post a new video thank you so much to Realusion and to nvidia for making this video possible and bye for now